you, you, <laughs> yourself as a, a very big fan of Biden and going into 2024, what do you, what do you think is going to happen this year with Trump and Biden? All right. Well, I mean, I think Trump's going to win. You think Trump's going to win? And so far, my track record is pretty good because I thought he was going to win in 2016 and I thought he was going to lose in 2020. So the reason I thought he was going to win in 2016 was because he tapped into a vein that I knew was uh, uh, sensitive. The government, the, you know, the uh, uh, Obama administration uh, was pretending the economy was good, but I, the voters knew it wasn't right. The statistics didn't tell the real story. Uh, average Americans were hurting and uh, the media and uh, Obama were telling them that things were great. Trump came out and said, I feel your pain. Like, you know, kind of like um, Clinton did initially on the economy, stupid. But it got, he identified, even though he's rich, he identified with the common man in their plight. And he said, look, I know things are bad. I will make America great again. We've lost all of our, our, our productive jobs. I mean, you're hurting. And I knew that that was a winning message. Uh, and he was able to beat Hillary Clinton, who was basically four more years, the, the establishment, the status quo. So I thought that Trump would be able to win, given the, the real nature of the economy, because people back then were saying there's a disconnect. Why do the voters not realize how good the economy is? It's because the economy isn't good, and the statistics are the disconnect, not the voters. Well, by 2020, Trump really hadn't delivered on his promises. He'd been in office for four more year, four years. And despite all the hype about how it was a booming economy, it really didn't improve. We, we continued to run big deficits and inflation was there. And so we didn't have as big a move, but he actually might have won. It's just, you know, I mean, who knows if he actually won or lost that election. But the, the way the votes ended up, the way they got counted, he lost. Um, but I think this year, is very similar, only worse than 2016, um, in that the economy is even in worse shape than it was then. And despite the media telling everybody how great it is and trying to wonder why it's not reflected in the polls. And in fact, not only is Biden the least popular president in history ever since they started doing these polls, but where he scores the lowest is on the economy. Mm -hmm. So if the economy is really so good, why does he score so low? Because He's getting normally if you're the president, if the economy is good, the voters will give you credit whether you deserve it or not. But if it's bad, they, they blame it on you. And Biden is getting the blame for the lousy economy. And Trump is coming in and recognizing how bad it is. And compared to how things were when he was president, they're a lot worse now. People are struggling a lot more. The cost of living has exploded uh, over the last few years. And, and so they they want to go back to the way it was when Trump was president now. That's not going to happen if we elect Trump. But the voters don't know that. They just think, well, it'll be a magic solution. We just put Trump in there and these problems are going to go away. And I mean, they're not. But at least that's what the voters are going to hope, because the one thing they're not going to want to do is vote to continue what we got, because what we got is awful. And so they're going to vote for change. They're going to want to throw the bums out. And the leader, the head of the bums is, is Biden. How ugly things going to get? In what respect? Like the divisive games, all this stuff. How ugly things going to get? The election well, cycle. Well, you know, I mean, things seem to be getting worse and worse. The divide. I mean, I, you know, I see that. You know, I've I, in you know my my lives, I see uh, people who were friends uh, for years don't even talk to each other anymore, even though they used to be Democrat Republican. Those political differences were okay. I mean, you could, they could still be friends, but it became so polarizing that you, you can't even be friends anymore. Uh, and, and it's mainly, I think it's mainly, I don't know from the, the, the left. And I don't like to call them liberal. And if my wife w w watches this, I mean, I'll make a point because she'll be happy is that the left isn't really liberal. Liberal means small government. Liberal means the government stays out of things. That's where it got started. Uh, but Roosevelt when the women started to vote, uh, he basically started talking about liberal policies because the liberals were very charitable, but with their own money, not with other people's money. And so um, he started calling government welfare liberal when it wasn't. It's only private charity is liberal. Government charity is, is theft. So they're not really 
not liberal in the classic sense. Uh, like the founding fathers were all liberals, but they were for small government. They were for sound money, and they, they didn't want welfare or Social Security or any, any of this stuff that is now associated with being liberal. But the, the left, everything that they kind of do economically has to do with feelings and emotion and their heart. And so they look at, here's somebody that's poor. Oh, the government needs to solve this problem by creating a program and spending money. Now, if you're a conservative libertarian, you still feel for that person who's poor, but you recognize that that government program is actually going to make it worse. It's actually going to entrap him in poverty. It's going to make it so he's always poor, right? You see the unintended consequences of the government action, right? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. The, 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 the Democrat doesn't realize that those good intentions are leading to hell, but their conservative Republican understands it. And so he doesn't, he's not in favor of these programs because he's rationalized that at the end of the day, they do harm. But the Democrat doesn't know that. He doesn't think past behind the immediate, this guy's poor and needs money, right? And so the, the, the Republican doesn't necessarily think the Democrat is a bad person. It's just that they don't understand. They don't get it. They're not, they don't get the economics. They're just missing uh, the connection. So yes, they're just, they're just misinformed. They're wrong. But the Democrat looks at the Republican. He's mean. He's heartless. He doesn't want this program. He must be a bad guy. Uh, So the the, the left will just think the right is mean and evil people. Uh, and you know the, the the right will just think, well, the left is just misguided and 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 misinformed. But now you know you've got you've got it so crazy because of this new, you know, politically correct um, woke uh, ideology that has now captured the left, and actually it, it, it turned it into something far worse than it's ever been and far more polarizing. And I, I think even maybe. Uh, a lot of it's splintering a lot of people on the left. I mean, look at like uh, Bill Maher. Look at some of the stuff that that he says. And he, you know, he's a Democrat, but now he's starting to sound more libertarian on a lot of things because he's getting pushed out of that spectrum by the the uh, the woke stuff. He'll still vote for Biden. 